Market commentator Peter Major of KD's Corporate Solutions is up from Cape Town. Well, fascinating insights. And it's, it's actually part of the whole story, isn't it, at the moment, Peter? Sure the, is. The capitalist system we were talking off air, uh, you said it's, it's almost what we're going through now is the capitalism's Berlin Wall. I think without a doubt, Alec, and I think every day it goes by, more people are going to agree with that statement. Mm. I'll, I'll stand by it all the way. They can bury me with that on my tombstone. This was the death of capitalism as we knew it. Greed, gearing, the kind I've, of things that... Yeah, mm -hmm. we can give the media lots of credit, and government was doing more to facilitate it than to help the public. Can you explain that? Well, I really noticed it in... Um, in the 80s, I think that's when we first saw that greed is good and we saw massive stimulation and Reagan came in with a, I'm going to lower taxes but we're going to increase spending. We're going to spend our way out of this. In fact, we're going to spend the Russians into bankruptcy. And you don't know how many Americans still say that, but it's huge percentages, a lot more than half, probably three quarters. So yeah, I think that's when it started. And we did have a recession and I was a fan of the senior Bush and he got to clean up the housing mess that Reagan made worse, that started small and got bigger. And I thought the Democrats did a pretty fair job by continuing with Bush's policies. But every time they tried to regulate the stock market, especially on derivatives, um, Arthur Levette was the appointee for the SEC. He wrote a book afterwards how he was thwarted by congressmen all mm -hmm. the way. Unfortunately, congressmen on both sides. The dot-com boom, though, how many people was that going to hurt compared to what we got now? Totally unnecessary to lower rates, to avoid a a recession after 10 years of a fantastic boom. But just because this administration wanted to avoid a little bit of a hangover after a 10-year party, this is what we're paying for now. It doesn't look like it's really capitalism in action at the moment. It's more like uh, government supporting perhaps some of its cronies. Look, I, I think capitalism, it's kind of may the best win, everything goes, and America's like that on sports, but so is most of the world. I think you're going to run a capitalist system, but if you don't have some kind of controls over it, it will devour itself, like probably most, most businesses. You know, most businesses need some kind of regulation because it's just win, win at all costs. Win, whatever the rules are, let's max out to those rules. You need a referee and you need, you need a level playing field. That's it, and we didn't have either of those for a very long time. Well, that's the philosophical background, but where the markets are right now is almost in panic phase. Wayne was saying a little earlier. You go along with that? Yeah, it's definitely panic phase. So how much longer... Or what more do we need to see before that uh, quietens? I agree with Wayne 110%. This is deleveraging. All the selling is leveraged selling. Okay, just explain that in real basic terms. Okay, again, we, we talked earlier. Most shares in the 60s were owned by big wealthy families, private individuals. Pension funds usually had 80% of the money in bonds, maybe some in cash, a little bit in shares. We've totally turned it the other way around. So, so many of these shares are owned by borrowed funds, whereas normally shares were never owned by borrowed funds. But now the majority of shares are owned by borrowed funds. And debts, banks are not able to loan like they used to. They're calling in debts. Um, and so much is on margin. It's not just borrowed money. It's multiples of borrowed money. And hedge funds are a perfect example. They're leverage four or five, even if you're leverage two to one. When that market goes down and you have withdrawals, your equity... It's just vaporizing at a multiple of what the market is. So all this deleveraging is what's happening now. It's interesting. In the last two years at the World Economic Forum in Davos, a gentleman by the name of Nouriel Roubini uh, from New York University has, become, has come more and more into the forefront, warning that there's problems on the horizon. Yeah, he was very clear. Three years ago, he had his own website, and he was starting to be quoted more and more. And he was very clear and specific. Um, he, he and uh, so Joseph Stiglitz, I think has always had a clear head on this. Paul Krugman, you know, they were talking, he was calling the Asian crisis almost to a T. There's been very good disciples out there, but media can definitely overrun those guys. Mm. So what do investors do right now, given the background that you've explained to us? Well, we've always said, first, you shouldn't have debt. So if you do have debt, get out of it. And, and I, that's kind of what's happening now on a giant scale. Anybody with debt, leverage debt on down is getting out of it. So yes, first of all, you've got to eliminate all your debt. Second of all, you probably need some kind of diversification. These five asset categories are always changing places. So never have all your assets in just one or two categories. And then I think third, what is your time horizon? If you're 70 years old, keep it in cash. And if you're 40, 50 years old, you've got another 10, 20 years. 
there's very good deals out there. The, the, the equities are now the lowest rated of all asset categories. And that's usually the lowest rated one that's going to be the best in a few years. Peter Major is with KD's Corporate Solutions.